Every year I like to do some modifications to the systems that I designed to make them a little bit better or to change them slightly to uh, accommodate uh, new goals that I have in my gardening. This is an update to the bucket system that I uh, developed using the non-circulating Kratky method. It has a couple reservoirs that uh, feed through a controller bucket to the four buckets uh, that you see in front of you, the dark green buckets with the uh, dark lids. I found that the black and the dark green are the best colors uh, so far that help to prevent algae from sunlight passing uh, through otherwise translucent containers. And you'll notice that uh, what I have is a series of T-connectors in the base of each of these buckets with a half inch rubber grommet and that allows me to daisy chain the buckets together. The uh, tail end of that uh, tube, which is actually pond tubing, has a shut off and that allows me to periodically drain the system if I ever choose to and refresh the nutrients within the buckets. You'll find that at the head end of this are two 32 gallon containers and one smaller bucket that I use as a controller bucket. The two 32 gallon containers will give me additional nutrients that I could use for hungry plants such as large pepper plants or tomato plants. At the base of each of those uh, large 32 gallon trash cans you'll see the pond tubing coming out from the half inch grommets, a straight through hose barb fitting and the red handles are shutoffs. Now those shutoffs allow me to close off the reservoirs if I ever want to do maintenance and it just uh, simplifies being able to clean or uh, make uh, changes with, without uh, having nutrients being flushed out through the system without the uh, shutoffs present. You'll notice that uh, there are blocks that are sitting underneath each of these and the reason for that is inside the small bucket is a float valve. It's a Carrick half inch float valve that basically allows nutrient to uh, flow to a preset level inside the bucket and by placing blocks under the smaller bucket that helps me to determine the level of the nutrient in each of the four green buckets and the blocks under the large reservoirs uh, allows me to have the nutrient flow into the uh, smaller bucket and what will happen is over the course of the season I will lower the smaller bucket which effectively lowers the nutrient level inside each of these green buckets and accommodates larger root systems. I really don't have to do that too often and this system is quite capable of doing nicely with larger plants such as a cherry tomato plant or perhaps a uh, larger pepper plant which uh, can produce up to 200 plus uh, pepper pods on it especially with the uh, super hot pepper series. If you'd like to build a system such as this it would be easy to accommodate your own design. One uh, possibility other than using the five gallon buckets would be to use a 27 gallon tote very similar to what you see over here that I have uh, set up using a different uh, system. This system uses the cracky fill and forget type uh, method and you'll find that the nutrients in these containers are preset to accommodate the plant over its life cycle. So rather than using an external reservoir system, what I do is I provide each plant with the nutrient that I believe it will need from uh, the time that I put it into the system until the time that I take it out. And over time what happens is these pepper plants get larger and larger growing in the uh, water and the root systems will eventually reach the bottom of the 27 gallon containers about the time that the nutrient is left uh, around the 10 percent range because once you get down to about 10 percent nutrient in each of these 27 gallon containers you'll find that the uh, salinity of the nutrient solution does eventually uh, contribute to the uh, plant's health you know starting to fail but these large super hot plants are wonderful to grow in this size container you could tell that this ahi jopito 
is uh, doing very nicely in the system. And being a typical pepper plant, you'll notice that most of the pods are forming underneath the plant. So lush canopy of leaves up above and pepper pods down below. That plant is actually growing in a net cup like what I have in front of me here. And so when the plant is young, I set it inside this net pot. I put inert uh, material around the outside of it, which does nothing more than stabilize the plant in the net pot. And I submerge the net pot to about here on the sides. And what happens is, uh, as the plant grows, the roots will start to come down out of the pot. You'll have upper roots that are collecting uh, oxygen, doing gas exchange. The uh, lower roots will be doing water uptake as well as uh, nutrient uptake. And as the roots uh, grow larger and larger, uh, you get more aeration roots and more water exchange uh, roots or water uptake roots down at the base of the plant. And there's no need for buying expensive potting mix each summer. It uh, simplifies things substantially. The containers, once uh, the season is over, are empty for the most part. And I just dump and I rinse out the containers and fill them back up with uh, fresh water, uh, rinse again, and stack them for the winter time. So these are just two of the systems that I've uh, set up in my garden. And if you would like to attempt to use uh, either of these two methods, there's some additional information out at the University of Hawaii's website under the name of uh, B.A. Kratke who originated a lot of these uh, techniques.